What's going on, Ghost Singles? It's Montavious back with the Empty Crypt, and today we are joined by a special guest. If you have been under a rock Pat, over the last year and a half, then you would definitely know who I'm here with today. Joey Harris, how are you doing? I'm very good. How are you? I am well. I'm well. Very excited for you to be here on the Empty Crypt. Basically, it's just a small podcast channel that I love to bring uh, guests on, and we talk horror so for those who may not know who you are just give us a little bit of a description of who you are and what you do um okay i'm an actress um halloween ends was my first film and it came out last october um <laughs> i'm a musician as well but you know it's everything slow due to the strike so i'm not <laughs> i don't know <laughs> like what more can i say <laughs> for sure no worries so um how's everything been for you like how's the whole you know just life in general how's life been doing for you you know it's good I just got back I uh, I took my mom on vacation for her birthday to Charleston Savannah so that was a very nice escape you know kind of distract me from everything that's going on in the industry but um it gets so lonely and sad and boring not being able to work you know it's a creative release and not being able to do that it's just like it's rough. Yeah. So, I mean, did you, before the strike, um, did you have other things lined up um, down the pipeline for you? Uh, prior to the strike, I finished a, uh, a finished a second film and we had just finished all the ADR work and everything. And it was going to uh, post-production and finish editing. And so they had to halt all of that. And so it was going to be coming out, I believe, around August, I mean, uh, October this year, around the same time Halloween came out last year. Um, mm. But now we have no idea. So, yeah, it stings. God, yeah, I know. it's And it's crazy, too. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the strike. And then um, I know it's been crazy, too, because, like, you know, this is, you know, your guys' livelihood, essentially. Yeah. And it's affecting everyone, like writers, directors, like everybody involved in film. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you guys aren't asking for much. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not yeah. asking for much at all. Um, I think it's fair what you guys are asking. And I, common people like myself, you know, we don't know the behind the scenes of yeah. what all it entails. So we stand with you guys proudly because you guys all deserve to be treated fairly. We appreciate that. And the thing that that uh, we really a lot of people don't completely understand is it's not just the actors, it's not just the writers, it's the camera crew, hair, makeup, props, literally anything, costume. So everybody involved in making a movie or a show is out of work. And so people are going to start to get real bored real quick when nothing is coming out. So... <laughs> No, you that's know. true. And I think just recently I saw something online, Surface Oman, that uh, the strike is going to go towards video games now. So this, look, I love movies, don't get me wrong, but I also mm -hmm. love video games, okay? See, how does that even, I, I don't even know how really that industry works, mm -hmm. but I know that a lot of uh, voiceovers for video games are very similar to voiceovers for TV. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's where that would connect, but I have to educate myself if that's coming up. For sure. No, no worries there. <laughs> just so, another category to support, but right. So gotta just do what you gotta do. Right, for sure. So did you been right into it? So how did you get into acting in the first place? Like what drove you to want to become a, an actor? I uh, <laughs> I always knew I wanted to be a musician and that was for some reason to me as a child it was easier for me to recognize that I could be a musician before I could recognize that I could be an actress um you know it, being an actress seemed kind of intangible and even though I was watching Disney Channel and seeing kids my age so um it wasn't until maybe later elementary school that I realized that was a real possibility and then I just kind of dove into it full force. My mom, I'm sure, was having a daily heart attack. But, you know, it's kind of hard to stop a kid when they're so determined. So sure. that's just kind of where it blossomed. And it just didn't stop. It was like full steam ahead. For so. sure. So 
so prior to you know halloween halloween ends like did you do any other you know acting before then or was this your first big big film Halloween Ends was my first film. Um, back when I was, I think I was transitioning from middle school to high school. Um, I worked on a, like a small little Netflix pilot and uh, it, it, it never made it, you know, beyond the screening stage. It was like, I just played a small little uh, thing. And I was so excited about it for so long. And, you know, I was, I was so excited to tell everybody, I was like, guys, guys, it's going to come out soon. And then I just, it just never existed beyond that. And so um, it wasn't until Halloween that it did actually happen and uh, it became real. And then it feels like it took forever for me to finally recognize that it was happening because I was in complete denial. So mm. <laughs> there's no way right now. There is no way, you know, and I didn't want to get my hopes up because I was like, what if, you know, what if it turns out the same thing as the other one, even though the other one was so minor, so small, you know, mm. I was worried. I was like, don't jinx it, please, for the love of God. So <laughs> for sure. Well, I'm glad you got it. I mean, so how did that audition even come about? Because essentially, like, I know you probably already digested the fact that this is true, but you are a part of one of the most renowned franchises in the history of the world. Like, yep. so you're, you're a part of this. So what does that mean for you? And like, how was that audition process? Uh, the audition process was actually very, very simple for me and me and a couple of my co-stars, we were talking about it and mine was a bit different from theirs. I just kind of auditioned, didn't hear anything for about a month and then got a call back uh, the next for a, a next day call back. And I thought it was for a completely different audition that I had done, you know, maybe a week prior. And I went in, ended up being David and he was like, yeah, you know, uh, let's just talk about it didn't it wasn't really a callback I already knew I had the part just I kind of was starstruck but in the sense of like David David Gordon Green is just like yeah I like it let's do it I'm just <laughs> gonna sit there and completely panic but um and then uh when I was talking with some of my co-stars they had a a, a longer audition process I guess and I don't know if that's because maybe they auditioned before or after um, but I know that Mikey and Martine, they were, they kind of did a couple zones, but you know, for me, it seemed fairly easy and maybe that's just what made it so, you know, shocking, I suppose, <laughs> but yeah. Man, that's crazy. That's nuts. I have, I would never even imagine, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself, you know, something I know. like that. So, I mean, like, so what does it feel like to be a part of like this huge franchise? It's a lot. It's a lot to weigh on your shoulders because you just want to make everyone proud and everyone happy that loves the franchise. And mm -hmm. uh, so when people, you know, when you mention a lot of people don't recognize me, which is great because I, I like to see their reactions first. I like to gauge like, oh, do you like scary movies? You know, da, 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 da. oh, have you seen, you know, Halloween? Da, da. And I like to see everyone's reactions first. And then some of some of the people, some people get it like they'll say, oh, and, you know, it'll click, but uh, a lot of times I don't mention it unless they already recognize I just, cool, and I keep going about my day, you know what I mean? And they never know where I was going with that. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot for people who are big fans and have watched this for years, like myself, and they, you know, you you just, it's intimidating in a sense. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to disappoint anybody. You just want to make them happy. And then, you know. <laughs> I mean, just, no, like, that's true. Again. It's such a big weight. Um, but, you know, have you had any, like, because, you know, there, there's people that agree with, like, David Gordon Green, the way his, his films with, and then you have, like, the original, you know, John Carpenter directed ones. So, like, do you, do you ever get people that have mixed feelings towards you just being a part of the ending saga? Yeah, um, I think n none necessarily to me directly, but a lot of, I like to do my own digging online. And it's always funny to me uh, when people describe uh, myself or the other bullies in the film. And it's so funny because they're always like, band kids? Band kids are the bullies? That and 
the funny thing to me about that is it's we are actually real people like our band kids are actually inspired by all real people and we all have the actual names except for myself my original name was I believe Miles and they changed it to Margot so we were all real people to our writer's life and so it's so funny because I'm like wow people think that this is just like you know weird band kids being bullies no they were actually horrid people in the 80s so yeah. um, there's that but um so that's really most of what I tend to see that has to do with me online a couple times too uh when people refer okay this makes me cackle nothing really hurts my feelings nothing hurts my feelings and so I always see these little random comments about which one are you talking about? Oh yeah, that that uh, that chunky bully chick, and it makes me absolutely cackle. I'm like, that's how y'all are like distinguishing us. <laughs> and I'm like, what? It's like not not. Oh yeah, the girl with like the giant hair, or another one that made me absolutely lose it was butch lesbian. And I was like, uh... My mom was like, well that's one way. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it just, it makes me cackle because you know how sometimes when you watch a movie or you watch a show for just like the first thing that you think when you see someone, that's how you refer to them. Yes. Like yes. if it's their eyebrows, it's, oh yeah, eyebrows. You know, yeah, it's like, it's however you're like, damn, people are doing that with me now. <laughs> oh <my laughs> that's God. so weird. Like I thought it was a weird approach, you know, to have band kids. But then, like you said, like, you know, anybody could essentially be a bully, right? So, yeah. I mean, I totally get it. Totally get it. But I honestly felt the only bully I felt bad for in this whole scenario was you. Because you technically wasn't really a bully. You was just there. Yeah. You I was know? a bystander. That, and I guess that's just as bad. That's just as yep. bad. But, like, I felt so bad for you. Because I'm like... Marco really didn't do nothing like you know like you were you were kind of in behind the scenes like as they were like you know picking on Corey so mm -hmm. I mean how was filming though like was there any any days where like you're like oh my goodness this is too much I don't want to do this right now or was it just great no it's just great it's my favorite thing on the planet and I think you know I was I was talking uh with my best friend about this the other day and I said you know it's kind of uh it's kind of rough because I think for most of my life, I've loved my career more than I've loved myself. And it, it kind of blurs the lines when you are finally doing the one thing that you love most. And then it kind of equates back to you and you're like, wow, I must really be pretty cool if I can do the one thing that I've always wanted to do. And then it kind of equals that self-love but it's also a problem a lot of people are like are you okay well you can't just rely on that because then if you're not working like now then what about like how are you going to feel about yourself I'm like well you know that's disrespectful that you brought that up <laughs> like, <laughs> but, like you know now that you say that but so the entire experience for me no matter what even if it's exhausting even if it's uh you know mentally draining or emotionally draining uh, it's still the only place I want to be. Nice. Now that that's beautiful. Cause I mean, you hear, you do hear some, some horror stories with people being on set, but it sounds like, you know, you had a very great time and was there any conflict on, on set or anything? Everybody just kind of mellowed, mashed together. Pretty good. Everyone got along so, so well. And I met people that I will be friends with for the rest of my life. I, my stunt double in that film, she was actually, I saw her earlier today. She came over to Palm Springs for a friend's birthday and we like hung out and grabbed coffee. Like we went to New Orleans together. I, you know, everyone has just been so lovely <laughs> to be around that you just don't want to let them go. And I think that's really special because I don't think you find that in a lot of jobs. You know, I think that's a that's something that's very, very unique to the entertainment industry because you spend so much time with them. It's kind of like a trauma bonding experience, but without the trauma. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like when people no. go through like horrifying things together, then they're like friends for life. <laughs> it's like, but it's not horrifying and it's just we're all creating art and magic. And so we bond like that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> for, for sure. So, you know, you're a fan of horror yourself. So what is your favorite? Mm -hmm 
horror movie. Are we talking like uh are we talking who are we talking like slasher? We're talking overall. It could be who or it could be slasher. It could just that that one movie that you go to that always, you know, gets you in that that spirit of horror. You know, there was a movie that I watched as a kid, and I think it was the the first horror movie I ever watched, and it is the only one that ever, I think, actually scared me, probably just because of how old I was, and I think it's called uh, Room 1408. It's with John Cusack. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. as a kid, that shivered my timbers, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't... <laughs> but I think I, being behind set, being behind being behind screen and seeing how everything works they don't scare me anymore but i love the original scream i actually love the remakes that they've done they've done a really good job in the remakes i love the original halloween um mm. i'm trying to think there was one movie as well that made me really nervous also because i watched it when i was younger when a stranger calls yes okay yes i like that one because too. i also babysat at the time and I was like, you know what? I quit. <laughs> like, really? This is a little bit. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> that is hilarious. It kind of kind of puts you in the whole Halloween, like the whole Michael Myers thing with the babysitter and stuff like right. that. No, that's awesome. So like, now, do you have any interest of maybe, because, you know, the Scream 7 is confirmed. So, uh, well, green lighted i should say i shouldn't say confirm just just yet uh mm. you got any interest in maybe trying to work your way into that absolutely i mean <laughs> i would be a-okay diving right into that um jenna ortega she is so incredibly talented and i would absolutely love to work with her um and again, I, I love the remakes that they're doing. They've done an amazing job. So I would absolutely love to be a part of that. And um, I mean, put in a good word, you know? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. No. I mean. <laughs> for so, sure. So, you know, with, yeah. with, your, with your death scene and Halloween ends, uh, did you have to, like, for all the, the dialogue that you had, especially when it was your ultimate demise, did you mm -hmm. have to go, how did you manifest those the, the screams the and you looked at um god i forgot what was the main bully's name i forgot his name terry yes so like when you looked up at him and you're like oh you're dead too you know so like yeah where did all these emotions come from because you looked petrified i was petrified um i think you know there's a they say method acting is really not good because then you're you know inciting trauma to yourself and like harsh emotions but I'm one thing about me is I have a phobia of, of dying like that is my it's not just like a random oh you know most people are no I have like a full-blown absolute phobia of it so every time I was under that car and I would just think about it I'm like and I'm done I'm done. All it took was one <laughs> thought and I was just absolutely losing it. And um, people were like, Joey, are, are you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> because I was genuinely like panicking, but you know, you know, I knew I was safe. It was just, if I think about it a little bit too long, then I just, I just am off on a tangent you know so yeah. it really did come from my deep rooted fear of dying for sure <laughs> i mean that's that's kind of like a, a healthy method acting you know some people really dive into like past trauma like childhood trauma uh and yeah and that scares me like because you know sometimes people can't pull themselves you know out of right. it mm -hmm. so but like you know it's kind of cool that you had like a phobia that you could just intertwined with emotion and uh -huh. you really did it so well like I said I my heart went out to you I felt so thank bad <laughs> but, uh, so, <laughs> thank you for feeling bad for me <laughs> for sure so are you looking to do any conventions or anything possible possible mm -hmm. um I I'm not quite allowed to say yet mm -hmm. but I will be announcing soon nice okay so 
possibly age 45 or maybe something else later on? Something else. Something else. No, that's cool. No, no, I, I definitely think, you know, you should definitely hit the convention. I wish you could join uh, everybody for age 45. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very surprised. I hope you do. I hope it's like a secret that you do. Because mm -hmm. uh, I forgot. Um, uh, there's two other two other actors from Halloween Ends. I know Nurse Deb, um, mm -hmm. she's going to be out there, but there's two other actors that's going to do the LA Horror Con mm -hmm. and Halloween Ends, like the little boy. I forget people's names, but like the little boy who died in the first <laughs> opening scene. Uh, yeah. Him and his mother. They're going to oh, be out yeah. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. The, his mother. I thought she meant Corey's mom. And I was thinking. No, not Corey's. I but she's going to one too. I think Rowan is going to the Halloween 45. Yes, he is. Yes, he, yeah. he got announced for that a, a while ago. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, it would be awesome. I'm actually going out there uh, in a few weeks. So I'm excited. And I was like, oh, man, I hope you got a chance to go. Like, are you still, can't you swing by? I don't, I don't know if you're in the area. Yeah, um, I'm actually in Palm Springs. So it's like two and a half hour drive, which I make all the time. So it's no big gee for me. But um uh oh I, so that's I the one oh um so halloween 45 i am not going to be attending that one solely because i was not invited <laughs> for sure for sure but there is one um within the foreseeable future that i will be announcing so and it's going to be within the area so okay. cool, cool 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 definitely i definitely have to grab an autograph from you that's awesome so yeah like, you're going to, or which ones are you going to I travel the country, so I go to tons. I've already been to eight this year, but um, yeah, yeah, I travel. Um, so we got, I'm going to Minnesota for Crypticon for the whole Terrifier, because I actually, so have you seen Terrifier? I saw the, I saw Terrifier too, like the one with like the bedroom scene. Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm a huge Terrifier fan. Like, ugh, like I would show you my collection. Like it's massive. But really? um, okay. <laughs> yes. So uh one of the one of the guys, I don't know if you remember the, the costume store scene with like the tall black guy. It's like Sienna, the Lauren Lavera, the lead character, and Arthur Clowns trying on the different glasses. Maybe. Like the sunflower glasses. The sunflower glasses sounds very familiar. Okay. Yeah, it's been a meme going around. I don't know if you if you've seen it, but uh, so <laughs> so what, the guy who actually gets killed, Art the Clown, drags him across the counter. We're we're like really good friends, so like I travel with him to all these different conventions, and like we just you know hang out. So that's how I get to travel because I just go with him and I get to meet that's like so cool. Yeah, like I met Damien, the the, uh, the creator of Art the Clown, uh, David Howard Thornton, who plays Art the Clown, Lauren, everybody I've met. Like so, just that is so cool. Yes, that's so that's really... what it must be like for my friend, you know, because I whenever I say, oh, I'm, I'm I told her I was able to tell her I was like, I'm doing a convention. They gave me tickets. I can't, you know, and like, would you like to come? And so she's like, so this is what it's like. <laughs> yeah, pretty so much. I just get to like do stuff now. <laughs> that's awesome. So you have a, a convention agent and all that stuff? Or no, does I don't. Agent, or does your one just agent? my manager. Like Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah. no, that's awesome. So hopefully, I mean, there's so many shows coming up, and gosh, there's so many shows. I know. I just thought like, H45 would have been like, because it's once every five years. That's the thing. It is? Yeah, it's, it's once every five years. So a lot of the people from the first, from the original Halloween, may not be around five years from now, you know, because they're you know they're kind of up there right so like it's once every five years are you years calling out. them old I mean, yeah. <laughs> if the shoe fits <laughs> so just jumping back into halloween ends like so how was it working with uh jamie lee curtis it was not at all how i expected it was going to be uh she's incredibly personable and she is very very random in the best way um she'll just swing in karate chopping she'll just be shouting 
swear words and boxing people and it's grand and you never know if you're like the next victim <laughs> so you're but you're just enjoying the ride and she is so sweet and she brought her dog and her dog is so cute and um she is just so so darling that is awesome like you literally lived like millions of people dream like dreams dream because half and of us would like, never meet her in life I, I literally, it felt surreal to me too, because of course I watched her all growing up for Halloween and Christmas every single year. And so for me, it was a very, very special moment. And absolutely, I did not take it for granted. And I, I sit there and I talk about it a lot with uh, Martine, who plays Billy. And we're just like, yo, do you ever just sit there and think about how crazy it is that you were just working with Jamie Lee Curtis like mutuals yeah. <laughs> <Like>, what <laughs> so like did, did you get did you get an autograph at all or did, like were you just trying to keep it professional I was just trying to keep it professional I guess I I guess I didn't think too much ab about it um I think I was just enjoying the moment we got you know we had all group pictures together uh mm -hmm. but I, I think I was just kind of too caught up in the moment. You know what I mean? For sure. Which is the yeah. best way to do it, though. You know? That's, that's yep, just savor it. For sure. No, that's awesome. So, <laughs> you know, anything else in the future that, you know, we can look forward to? I know, like, some stuff is top secret and because of Strike, but anything we can look forward to? Lisa Frankenstein. Lisa Frankenstein. What is that? So uh, it's a film uh, that uh, Diablo Cody wrote and uh, Zelda Williams is making her directorial debut. And the cast is so, so cool. How we have Catherine Newton, Cole Sprouse, Henry Eikenberry, Liza Silverano. It's, it's, I absolutely am so excited for everybody to see it because I think it's going to be one of those movies that's just going to be a really funky, you know, comfort movie for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. uh, it's very offbeat, quirky, and I'm just, I'm so excited to see it and to see other people's reactions to it. So any day now. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. No, that's awesome. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. So anything you want to say to, you know, your fans out there, because essentially you do have fans. So anything you want to say to those those crazy fans of yours out there? Oh my God, you guys are making me blush. You know, I, I always <laughs> joke, you know, when I was a kid, you know how you see people like an edit of somebody and then of <laughs> like a celebrity or something that you like, not that I'm a celebrity, but you know, it when I see that somebody is like uh, posted a picture of me <laughs> and I'm like, so I always joke, you know, you've made it <laughs> when somebody makes an edit of you or somebody posts. And then it just makes me so excited. I'm like, somebody is taking their time to create something of me. you got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, and I get so excited. I like I sent it to my mom and I like I sent it to my all my friends. I'm like, guys, guys, look, I'm my first fan. <laughs> so, For sure. It's, and it's so cool. <laughs> no but i mean you are a celebrity i mean you you're definitely you're part of the halloween franchise so and that will forever go down in history like you and halloween and it's kind of sad to say this but it's also kind of awesome like you're always no matter what happens in your life mm -hmm. uh you know whether you go to the great beyond or whatever you're still always going to be associated with halloween for the yeah. rest of eternity and yep. that is monumental. Like, there's so many people that, that you know, that unfortunately leave this world and they never really got to make their mark. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with your first major role, you did that. And it's only going to grow, you know? I know. It's only so, up from here. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, you know, anything you want to say to your fans or the Halloween fans out there? Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all the support and all the love. And it makes my day every single time. And I just want to give you a big hug. So for sure. Uh, well, maybe you can give them a hug at the next convention. I will give you a big yes. When I announce it, come give me a big hug because I want to thank you so much. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so uh any social media uh, outlets where the fans can reach out to you or just to kind of keep up to date with what Joey Harris is doing. 
Yeah, my uh, my only social media, I think, actually, is my Instagram. So it's Joey Harris official. Um, I guess I have a Snapchat too, which is a really clever name. It's Joe Joey H. That was my very clever middle school creation. So yeah, but I, I don't really, I'm not on there much. But my Instagram, I guess, staying tuned is great for that. For sure, for sure. Well, I appreciate your time so much here on The Empty Crypt. It has been a pleasure, and I definitely look forward to seeing you in the near future. So hopefully, you, you know, whatever you announce, I'll be excited, and I'll definitely have to come to that convention, for sure. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, you enjoy the rest of your evening, and um, I'll stay in touch. Yes, sir. Okay. All right.